Hello, everyone, and thank you for being connected here today. I'm sitting here with author and speaker Peggy Priest. Peggy, thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. For those who are not familiar with the awesome things you're doing, let them know about yourself. Uh, currently, I am. Uh, we run a home business, my husband and I. And on the side, we are involved in a ministry called United Marriage Encounter. We love that ministry. We'll talk more about it later. And also, in my spare time, I wrote a book. So we we stay a little busy, my husband and I. So uh, this is where we are. Yes, ma'am. Speaking of your book, Holy Echoes with God, your book confronts that feeling that we've all felt, the feeling that maybe God isn't listening to me or doesn't pay attention to what my needs are. In your own personal spiritual journey, how have you confronted those feelings? It's a really good question. Um, before I was a Christian, I reached out and cried out to God many times, and I didn't know if God was really hearing me. I didn't know him personally. And uh, when I became a Christian, I was given this viewpoint of, you know, how you turn around and then you can see things behind you. And I basically saw how he was there every step of the way, even though I didn't know he was there. And he showed me in different aspects of my life of who he brought into my life around me to keep me safe, to bring me and guide me to him. And then uh, that spiritual journey continued to the point of I, I reached out through prayer, reading and listening. Uh, I'm not a good listener. I am one of those people. I'd rather talk than listen. It's very hard for me. Um, but he taught me to be still. And one of my scriptures that he kept telling me over and over back in 2020 was be still. And so I put that on my arm to remind myself. Um, I'm really excited to see how he took that book and took it from 20 some odd years ago when I started it on a journey where I picked it back up in 2020, he said it was time and had me listen to him, had me adjust the way the book was going and it made a turn and it had uh, started in one direction. And when it finally finished, it was in a completely different direction of this is what happens when God speaks to us. And hence the holy echoes. How many times have you heard the same scripture over and over? And I'd walk around going, I just heard that one. I just heard that one. Well, that's the holy echoes and how God can reach us. And it's, it isn't always audible like Samuel. I would like it to be, but it's not. And a lot of times it's the stillness in our heart. And you can, if you're listening, you can hear what he's trying to tell you. You said something here that really struck me, which is that you said you started the book within your spiritual journey almost 20 years ago? Yes. So for yes. that individual that's listening and saying, hey, I got a book inside of me. I got a story I want to share. But, you know, maybe they're, I don't know, in year five. <laughs> what yes. perspective, what strategy, what encouragement could we provide that individual to continue on that path with regards to giving birth to that book? And that's exactly what it was. It was interesting because it was over 20 years ago. I picked up, I was in, um, in a position to start writing. I started writing this book and I had a complete manuscript on <clears throat> Lotus Notes. So if those <laughs> who understand Lotus Notes would know that that's a couple years ago. Uh, and I ended up with a manuscript that was printed out because I couldn't even access Lotus Notes anymore. And I carried that with me for many years. And as I carried it, I had reached out to one publisher and they said, no. And I said, okay, then it's not time. But I knew the time would come. I just didn't know when that time would be. And in 2020, in October, uh, the Lord just spoke to me so clearly in my head, it's time to pick it back up. And at that time, I said, I'm not ready. <laughs> I go, it's, it's 2020, Lord, don't you know what's going on? Like he doesn't, but you know, and, and him and I have that conversation a lot. And he said, no, it's time. And I said, well, I'm really busy with a business right now. We're trying to stay afloat. We're trying to, and he's like, no, people need to hear 2020. And I said, okay. So I picked it back up and he started giving me the stories. And so then, you know, when it's time, because it's, it just flows. The writing flows. And I heard 
you know, oh, pick this story back up, pick that story back up. So when I was putting everything back into it, I saw the book in a completely different direction. And that's the part that I never give up because it's not always our timing, but it is always his timing. You talk about that state of flow. And for many individuals, that state of flow is where everything is just going smooth and nothing is interrupting, right? Everything is just going, quote unquote, perfect. And oh, we love that state of flow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. But it's not always perfect. <laughs> In the timing, I, I, I was like, okay, put down this, pick this back up. I have to write. I have, and it was like that all the way deep inside of me as, as it, believers would understand that you, you feel compelled to tell somebody about your story or you feel compelled to tell somebody about the Lord. I felt compelled to write this down. Somebody had to hear it. And then I was put on it. You would need to get this done now. So it was an urgency in my heart. That state of perfection, that state of flow, that state of where everything is at least moving forward is an ideal state where many marriages want to get to. Now, your book is an amazing and awesome book. And in a moment, we'll talk about how individuals can get their hands on it. But the proceeds for your book go towards UME, United Marriage Encounter, which you and your husband are the executive couple in Western New York. For those who aren't familiar with UME, let them know about the mission of UME. Thank you. United Marriage Encounter, um, my husband and I became involved back in 2016. Um, their mission is uh, in response to a call, they offer weekend experiences and a community of caring couples who are committed to having a stake in other people's marriage. Their vision is to start transforming one man, one woman marriages that lead to stronger Christian families and stronger Christian communities, because that's what it's all about. For those individuals that say, man, I'd really like my marriage to get in the state of flow. <laughs> right? I really want my marriage to be transformed. What is the strategies that they can anticipate gaining from being involved with UME? Because as you mentioned, there's a series of weekend activities. And even in the midst of that, there's a mar just a marvelous community within that. But what are the strategies that individuals who are looking to transform their marriage can anticipate when getting involved with UME? It's a really good question. Uh, United Marriage Encounter has a basically 48 hour, we almost call it a boot camp. It's for uh, the couples that want to take their marriage and take it to that next level. We teach them tools for communication. They learn those tools on that weekend. They go to their room and they practice those tools with each other through writing. The nice thing about this is this is not a group share weekend. This is about you and your spouse. You're going to take that time to walk away from everything else on the outside just for that 48 hours and zone and and just as you say work together as a couple you're uh, the biggest thing about the united marriage encounter is it's offering you that uh work free weekend it's offering you that kid free weekend it's offering because at the end of the day um the kids aren't going to be there forever everything else isn't it. it's you and your spouse and god and that's what it does. And it walks you through an entire weekend of starting with self and then you and your spouse and then you, your spouse and God. And it just formulates from there and learning that tool of communication and continuing to practice it. The awesome experience about United Marriage Encounter is that after your weekend, you have that opportunity to reach out to other couples who've been on a weekend and have what people have heard it called similar to a small group. You can get together through Zoom, on live, depending on where you are, and practice those tools together. So you're encouraging, and we have a stake in each other's marriage. So there's 19 weekends scheduled for 2022. We have them as far away as Hawaii and Australia, if you want a weekend getaway, just saying. And we have them as close as New York, right around our corner. And New York, upstate, we have them twice a year. Most of them do have one to two times a year in each community. And uh, we'd love to see anybody else want to join and uh, learn more about United Marriage Encounter and take their marriage to that next level. Now, we didn't make a mention to it, but you and your husband 
our powerful speakers at the UME weekend. You two share transparently on those stories that you've that you've both faced. And oftentimes communication is one of those biggest challenges for any of those marriages that right now are having trouble with just communicating and just saying something as simple as I'm sad or I'm hurt, or as we know within the UME community that, you know, you're responsible for your feelings. Feelings are not neither good nor bad, but your actions yes. are. Talk about those individuals who maybe need a strategy with regards to how to get to a healthier communication. Well, that's great. Um, the nice thing about being a speaking couple is we're on the inside and we, as there are going to be four couples that speak on each weekend and it's nice each couple is coming from a different background. So the couples that attend the weekend may find that they can uh, understand and relate to one or more of the couples that are there. Because what we do, as you said, we take our personal experiences, we rip off the bandage, so to speak, and share deep in, you know, as much as we can so that the couples feel comfortable to share with each other. And that's what's important because if they can see us doing this, they can see themselves doing this as well for each other. Well, Peggy, I thank you so much for being part of the program. Now, all of the proceeds of your book, Echoes with God, go towards UME, United Marriage Encounter. For those who want to get connected with you and get their hands on your awesome book, of course, more details on UME, let them know how they can do so. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yes, as you mentioned, all net proceeds go to United Marriage Encounter. Uh, this is my Hannah project for this book. That's what I call it. And so anybody that wants to be a part of this project, we are very excited and we want to get the word out for United Marriage Encounter. Um, if you'd like to attend a weekend, you can go to unitedmarriage.com. That is unitedmarriage.com. And that will show you more about our vision, our mission. Um, there's some testimonies out there and how to sign up for any weekend you choose. Again, we have them everywhere. It's a great getaway for a couple. And it's also a great way to take that marriage to the next level. My book, you can reach on Holy Echoes by PeggyPriest.com. And that is my website, which gives more information about me, about the book, what's going on. And the newest thing with the book is by the end of the month, it will be an audio book. We are in the process of completing it that way. So very exciting news there. Awesome. Awesome. Peggy, thank you so much for being part of the program. And of course, send all my regards to Carl. <laughs> thank you so much for having me and uh, give your wife a hug for us. Definitely. <laughs>